Mother Nature didn't just shape mountains, she sculpted nightmares, legends, and straight-up alien playgrounds. We're talking about a rock sliced cleaner than a katana and a pit that's been burning for 50 years with no chill in sight. These aren't just formations, they're full-blown mysteries carved into the earth. Are you ready to question everything you thought you knew about this planet? Well, let's dive into the 15 most unbelievable mountain formations from Earth's past. Number 15. Al Nasla Rock, Saudi Arabia. Out in the middle of the Tama Desert, this sandstone formation doesn't look like it belongs to nature at all. Al Nasla Rock is sliced perfectly in half, with a razor-thin gap that's so precise people have accused aliens, lasers, and ancient technology of doing the job. The two halves balance upright on their own stone pedestals, untouched, unshaken, like a surreal piece of modern sculpture dumped into the desert. Geologists throw out theories, wind erosion, tectonic cracking, thermal expansion, but none of them fully explain the surgical accuracy of the split. There are no tool marks, no signs of collapse, and the rest of the terrain has nothing even remotely similar. It just sits there, unbothered, split perfectly, waiting to be understood. It's not sacred, it's not staged, and it's not part of any larger pattern. It simply exists, and the fact that no one can fully explain how or why makes it one of the most unsettling formations ever seen. Number Ketors, Man Pupuner Pillars, Russia. They rise out of the ground like something left behind. Seven monolithic pillars, carved by time, stand in complete isolation across the Komi Republic's tundra. The Manpupuner formations aren't clustered. They're spaced like sentinels, tall, uneven, and weather-beaten shaped by wind, snow, and volcanic ash that's been eroding for over 200 million years. They weren't built or placed, they're what's left after everything else disappeared. Local Mansi legends say they were once giants, turn to stone mid-step for trespassing on sacred ground. And when you stand beneath them, that story doesn't feel like folklore, it feels like the only explanation that makes emotional sense. There are no fences, no noise, just wind and sky, and these impossible towers. You can't climb them, you barely want to touch them, they look ancient in a way that doesn't feel historical, it feels prehistoric. Like something older than language, just standing there watching, outlasting everyone who's ever tried to explain them. Can you explain them? Number 13. Real Foot Lake, Tennessee. It wasn't dug, carved, or built. Real Foot Lake exists because the Earth broke itself apart in 1811 and 1812. The New Madrid earthquake struck with such power that the Mississippi River reversed direction, flooded the land and left behind a drowned forest that became a lake overnight. You can still see trees growing out of the water like they never got the memo that the ground had changed. Everything about it feels unnatural, not because it's violent, but because it happens so fast. The lake doesn't have a clean shoreline or predictable depth. It spreads out like spilled ink, creeping around stumps, wetlands, and half-swallowed paths. People call it peaceful, but it holds a different kind of silence, like the land is still adjusting, still remembering what it used to be. Real foot isn't just a body of water, it's a geological scar that never closed. You don't visit it to relax. You visit it to feel the echo of an event that shook the map and rewrote everything overnight. Number 12. East African Rift, Africa. This isn't a scar, it's a warning that the Earth is still moving. The East African Rift is one of the most active and dramatic geological features on the planet, a fracture line stretching thousands of kilometers, slowly tearing the African continent in two. It's not theory, it's visible. Entire valleys have sunken, volcanoes have risen, and mountains like Kilimanjaro and Mount Kenya were born from the pressure of it all. The rift isn't neat, it's raw. Lakes like Tanganyika and Malawi filled its gaps, ecosystems adapted to the chaos, and the result is a stretch of land that pulses with seismic energy. It's alive beneath the surface, constantly reshaping itself. And unlike the quiet erosion of most mountain ranges, the East African Rift is a violent creator, 
earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, new terrain, this is geology in motion, still carving and still changing. One day, millions of years from now, it may fully split the continent. Until then, it remains Earth's longest open wound, slow, deep and impossible to ignore. Well let's be real, the future isn't looking good. Number 11. The Queen Sep's Head, Taiwan. This one won't last forever. The Queen's head rises delicately from the rocky coast of Yuliu Geopark, tall, narrow and unmistakably regal. It looks like a sculpture of a woman's profile, carved with intention, but no one shaped it. The sea and wind did the slow work, grain by grain over thousands of years, until limestone turned to silhouette. Its neck is the most fragile part, thin curved and shrinking by a centimeter every year. Scientists have measured the erosion. They know it's only a matter of time. And that's what gives this formation its weight. It's not just a tourist site, it's a countdown. People come by the thousands to photograph it, but what they're really doing is trying to capture something before it disappears. There's no repairing it, no rebuilding it, no second version. When it falls, that's it. The queen bows once, and she's gone. The same forces that made her are already erasing her, one gust at a time. Number 10. Drang Garnier, Faroe Islands. Drang Garnier doesn't just sit on the map, it rises like something imagined. Between the islands of Vagar and Tindolmer, this jagged sea arch cuts through the Atlantic mist like the entrance to another world. Its basalt frame has been carved over millions of years by relentless waves and impossible patience. There's no symmetry here, just raw formation. Two towering stacks stand nearby, Story Dranger and Litley Dranger. The terrain leading there isn't gentle either. The trail is brutal, the cliffs are steep, and the wind doesn't care who you are. But standing in front of it, framed by water and cliffside silence, you feel like you've stepped outside time. The name comes from Old Faroese, meaning sea stack, but words don't really cover it. Dranger Nair isn't beautiful in a polished sense, it's beautiful in the way wild things are. Harsh, untamed and unreachable to anyone who wants comfort more than awe. Number 9. The Gates of Hell, Turkmenistan. It wasn't supposed to burn this long. Back in 1971, Soviet scientists drilled into the desert looking for natural gas, the ground beneath them collapsed, exposing a massive underground pocket. To stop toxic gas from leaking out, they lit it on fire, assuming it would burn out in a few days. That was over 50 years ago. Today the Darvaza gas crater called the Gates of Hell still burns. Flames roar from a 230-foot-wide pit in the heart of the Kurukum Desert, flickering day and night. You can feel the heat long before you reach the rim. The air is thick, hot, unnatural. And yet it's hypnotic. No guards, no glass, just a burning hole in the earth surrounded by emptiness. It's not a volcano, it's not a gazer, it's a man-made scar that never closed. You stand at the edge, watching fire churn from underground, and it doesn't feel like science anymore. It feels like something we weren't supposed to open. Number 8. The Twelve Apostles, Australia. They look like giants waiting offshore. The Twelve Apostles rise straight out of the Southern Ocean, towering limestone stacks lined up along Victoria's Great Ocean Road. Wind and waves carve them from mainland cliffs over millions of years, first into caves, then into arches, and finally into isolated towers. Today, only eight still stand. The others have already collapsed, and the rest will follow, that's part of what makes them so striking. They look eternal, but they're not. Each wave chips away a little more, reshaping what's left, breaking what once held firm. From the cliffs above, the view is quiet and surreal. Water crashes below, gulls circle overhead, and the ocean does its slow, brutal work. They weren't named by religion, they were named to awe. Even though there were never twelve, the title stuck because it felt right. These aren't statues, they're the remains of something ancient still being rewritten by time, water and sky. Number 7. Moaraki Boulders, New Zealand. 
Lined across the beach like forgotten relics, the Moriraki boulders don't look like they belong here or anywhere, really. Perfectly round, some over 10 feet wide, they're scattered along the Otago coast like the earth once rolled out marbles and left them behind. But these aren't dropped or placed, they were built slowly, underground, through a process called concretion. Over 60 million years, minerals wrap themselves around organic cores, layer by layer, until these stone spheres grew inside the earth, only to be revealed by erosion centuries later. Look closely and you'll see their surface webbed with strange cracks, some filled with calcite and others weathered to look like gold veins. Maori legends say they're the remains of food baskets and calabashes washed ashore from a wrecked canoe. And that version in some ways makes more emotional sense than the science, because they don't feel like formations. They feel like artifacts, things carried from one world into another, left on the sand as proof that time doesn't always move in straight lines. Number Size Arbol de Piedra, Bolivia It doesn't grow, but it looks like it should. Arbol de Piedra or stone tree rises from the Eduardo Avaroa desert like something sculpted by imagination. It's a single sandstone column, balanced on a narrow trunk with jagged branches reaching in every direction, 23 feet tall, yet somehow light looking like a breeze could carry it away. The desert winds carved it that way, sandblasting the base until the harder layers above remained. Its location only adds to its surreal feel, 14,000 feet above sea level, surrounded by the dead calm of Bolivia's high-altitude salt plains. There are no trails, no shade, and no noise. Just silence and this impossible shape standing by itself, like a memory someone left behind. And it's not just about form. The texture is sharp, the edges worn but alive. Nearby, mountains rise in the distance, and the light shifts constantly. It's not a landmark that invites you in. It just stands there daring you to figure out why it looks the way it does, and how it's still standing at all. Alright guys, now let's talk about Number 5. Bryce Canyon, Utah, USA It's called a canyon, but that name barely scratches the surface. Bryce is a labyrinth of natural amphitheaters where gravity and weather chiseled the land into something that feels more alien than earthly. Towering formations called hoodoos, thin spires of rock, rise in tight clusters like a stone forest frozen mid-growth. Their colors shift with the light, ranging from deep red to faded pink and chalky white. The shapes are sharp, jagged, impossible to organize. What made them wasn't a single force but a combination, frost wedging during harsh winters, rainfall carving grooves, and centuries of erosion peeling back every layer. Some hoodoos stretch higher than a 10-story building, each one with its own twisted shape. Walk into Bryce and the scale swallows you. It doesn't feel carved, it feels like something collapsed and never stopped collapsing. The most iconic? Thor's hammer. A lone column topped with a heavy boulder that's somehow still hanging on. You don't wander through Bryce. You navigate it, slowly carefully and with your mouth open. Number 4. Marble Caves, Patagonia, Chile. Carved in silence over 6,000 years, the marble caves of Patagonia aren't something you walk through, they're something you drift into. Set in the middle of Lake General Carrera, the caves are only reachable by boat. Their walls, ceilings and columns are made of solid marble, smoothed and swirled into hypnotic patterns by the lake's endless rise and fall. The color depends on the water, deep turquoise in spring, silver blue in winter. Light reflects inside the cave with an eerie softness, giving the marble a strange glow that doesn't look real until you're surrounded by it. No two surfaces match. Every curve and streak was drawn slowly by time and waves. Nothing was forced, nothing was planned. The most famous chamber, known as the Marble Cathedral, lives up to its name with arches tall enough to echo. It's not loud, it's not flashy, it's just quietly, impossibly perfect. Nature didn't rush it, and that patience shows in every inch. Number 3. Wuling Yuan Scenic Area, China Wuling Yuan doesn't just challenge gravity, it seems to ignore it altogether. 
This stretch of land in China's Hunan province is filled with thousands of narrow sandstone pillars, some stretching over 2,500 feet into the air. They don't lean, they don't taper, they just rise straight up, like nature built its own skyscrapers before we ever did. Formed from a prehistoric seabed, the area was slowly shaped by wind, water, and time until these vertical monoliths remained, each one separate, each one untouched. It's one of the few places on Earth where the ground seems to float. The landscape is so surreal that it inspired the Hallelujah Mountains in James Cameron's Avatar, but no CGI matches the raw scale of standing at the base, looking up. Walkways snake around cliffs, mist settles in the valleys, and the air feels still like something ancient is holding its breath. There are places you visit for beauty, and there are places that change your sense of scale. Wuling Yuan does both, and then some. What do you think about it? Well, let us know. Number 2. Singji de Bemaraha, Madagascar. The word unwalkable doesn't quite do it justice. Singe de Bemara is a forest made entirely of razor sharp limestone spires, stretching across 600 square kilometers in western Madagascar. Nothing here rolls, nothing flows, it rises, sharp, jagged, unforgiving. The stone is so brittle it splits into blade-like edges that cut through air, light, and anything that dares to move too fast. Singe means where one cannot walk barefoot and it's not a warning, it's a fact. The formations were sculpted by acidic rain filtering into the porous rock, etching deep crevices and spires over millions of years. But it's not just rock, it's a vertical maze, home to rare animals, plants and species that exist nowhere else on Earth. Limmers leap from peak to peak, birds nest in crevices that could slice skin. The deeper you go, the quieter it gets, and the more it stops looking like a forest and starts feeling like something Earth designed not to be touched, only witnessed. Number 1. Giant Sits Causeway, Northern Ireland. You could believe it was built. Stacked columns and interlocking hexagons, each one shaped so precisely that it almost looks artificial, but this isn't a ruin or a monument, it's geology at its most surreal. The giant's causeway was formed 60 million years ago during intense volcanic activity. Lava surged to the surface and cooled so quickly that it fractured into these geometric blocks. Over time, erosion did the rest, smoothing the edges and revealing the pattern below. Today, more than 40,000 basalt columns make up this stretch of Northern Ireland's coast. Some rise like steps. Others remain half buried in sea foam. Irish legend tells of a giant named Fionn who built the causeway to cross the sea and fight his Scottish rival. And when you walk across it, part of you understands why that story stuck. It doesn't feel accidental. It feels earned. Giant's causeway doesn't ask for attention. It commands it. One formation, one myth, one coastline. It's not just a wonder. It's a challenge to every definition of natural. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon in the next one.